fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here in Tel Aviv, Israel. Today we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Tel Aviv. And I want to start with this one because when people come to Israel, they think, oh, it's just holy sites. It's just religious stuff about Christianity and Judaism and Islam. No, we have to realize when you come to Tel Aviv, don't think of it as a religious city. Think of it more as a party and get to the beach kind of city because it is a totally different vibe here in Tel Aviv versus Jerusalem or if you're going to other cities around Israel. So I want to get that out of the way. This is not part of your religious trip. This is part of your, maybe if you're praying to the sun gods and you want to enjoy a really great time at the beach, that's what you're doing here in Tel Aviv, okay? So I want to make sure you realize that. Don't think this is going to be the big religious city on your Israel vacation because that's Jerusalem and they do celebrate Shabbat here. You know, the Saturdays where everything's closed. They do celebrate that here in Tel Aviv, but it's not as, like you won't notice it as much as if you're in Jerusalem and other parts of the country. And whether you're a sun worshiper or not, one thing I want to tell you is don't skip out on the beaches and walking on the beachfront promenade. I mean, I'm here early morning and I can look down and there's people running along the beach. I mean, it's just a gorgeous run, but also the beach after beach after beach. What's cool is don't think there's not a beach for you because there's beaches for families, there's beaches for singles, there's beaches for all kinds of people. But the honesty, the beaches here, are gorgeous and that promenade is something you don't want to skip out on. So don't just enjoy the city and the food and the nightlife and the clubs and the bars and the art museums. No, no, make sure you're hitting the beach. But honestly, don't worry. I mean, that's what people come here for. And when you are on those beaches, I want to tell you this, don't ignore the flags and the kind of warnings about where you should swim and not swim because you'll notice there'll be the flags out, you know, if you can swim or not. But what's nice is they actually have like these buoys around certain parts you go to so you know where to swim because there actually is kind of a strong current out there. So you want to be, you know, kind of vigilant about where you are swimming just to be safe. And of course, when you're in a beach town, obviously don't forget your sun protection, your hats, your sunblock, you're reapplying quite often. But one thing I think people don't realize is, you know, when people think of going to a beach city like Tel Aviv, they only put the sunblock on at the beach. But you have to realize is you're going to walk around the city to see the museums, the Bauhaus, the architecture and all kinds of stuff and you get burned that way too. So do remember that, okay? Safety first when it comes to the sun. And speaking of walking around the city, I think an important don't not to forget is don't forget to go to the Carmel Market, okay? That is the big market, the shuk, you know, the, the market, you're gonna go there and yes, it'll have the sights, the smells, the tastes, all the really good little snacks you wanna have when you're here in Israel, they have that there. You wanna get your, 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 your shirts for your kids, that's where you're gonna go. So don't miss out on that. And if you want kind of like a nicer market, cause the Carmel Market's like that old school kind of thing where you're walking around, you really feel like, oh, this is really, really cool when you're here. Like you get that really good, nice vibe. But if you want like higher end food, you can go to the Sharona Market, uh, which is a little bit farther away. It's not as easy to get to, or you're, it's not as much part of the, I'm walking around seeing the city. You're kind of going more towards the east part of the city to go see that. So do be aware of that one. And the thing is, when you go to the Carmel Market, another don't I have for you is don't forget to negotiate at the Carmel Market. Now, when you're walking around Tel Aviv, look, when you see a price tag on, you know, on food in a store or on a you know, dress in a store, those prices are set. Okay, the only time you're really negotiating really is actually at the market. So don't be afraid to do that. And when you are negotiating at a market, remember, they're going to give you whatever price. You have to know in your mind, what is that worth for me? And don't go above that. Because here's the thing, a lot of those things you see at the market, you can get at other stalls. So just keep walking around and don't buy the first thing you see, because honestly, there'll be other ones there and you can always go back around and find it again. Now, one of the big reasons why Johnson actually wanted to come to Tel Aviv was the Bauhaus movement. And so my don't for that is don't begrudge the Bauhaus building. So if you're not sure what the Bauhaus style is, it's a type of architecture. When you're walking around, like oh, if you're going down uh, Rothschild Boulevard, you see those like curved balconies there, that's the Bauhaus movement, or you might call it the international style. And you have all these really cool architectural buildings around the city that you'll see. Some are kept up, some are a little bit more lived in, but you definitely see the vibe of how there's all this kind of mid-century modern architecture throughout Tel Aviv. Because Tel Aviv is a very new city. I believe it was you know, formed in like 1909 and then in 1920s, 30s, they started to grow and then the Bauhaus movie came and it really expanded with that. So just notice you're gonna see that architectural style. And you're like, hey, and you kind of get that seated again and again and again as you go through the city or at least more the near the beach part. Because honestly, when you're out by the airport, you're coming in, it's all glass and steel structures. So it's not as much fun. So that's what I would say is, you know, don't stay out in the suburbs, though you can, because you can get in, there's, you know, the buses here, the, the light rail, there's all kinds of stuff to get into town. But if you're going to be coming for the beaches, I, I recommend don't skip out on staying at the beaches because honestly, there's tons of hotel options to be around here. Lots of hostel options as well, so you can do it a little bit cheaper. So you do have that. Now, no matter where you're staying, I mean, I don't want you to tell you this. Don't think it's just Bauhaus and beaches when you are here in Tel Aviv because there's a fantastic food scene when you're here. I mean, this is a place 
where you're going to get the you know amazing hummus falafel yes but all kinds of international food because i'll be honest after you've been in israel for about 10 days on a tour i'm just saying you get a little tired sometimes about the food and you want to spice it up a little bit try something a little bit different tel aviv is the city to eat really great internationally here in israel i mean you can get good stuff all over the country I mean, honestly the food in israel is fantastic the freshness the the fish from the fish to the yes the hummus and the falafel but but also just the the veggies you get and the fruits you get here it's so good but here in tel aviv you get to have that from other places as well so it's kind of like a nice mix of food to go here and that's what i want to tell you if you get a chance don't pass up the chance to do a food tour when you're here in tel aviv because there's so many good restaurants and so many different types of food you can have here yes you can have traditional israeli food you know kind of tours but also you could have other types as well so that can be a fun thing to do and you know aside from just doing food tours and the, the bow house and stuff also don't forget about the culture that's here. There's so many museums that are here. I mean, from history to art, I mean, Tel Aviv Art Museum is fantastic. If you wanna to go to art museums that are dedicated to specific artists, they have that when you're here. So you can get the culture, not just the beach. That's why people like coming here because look, I can come here with my family. They got good stuff to do with your kids from the beaches and around the town, but also I can get culture with the museums. I can learn about the architecture, the Bauhaus. I mean, the Bauhaus Center, you can go and learn about not just the, the architectural style of Bauhaus, but also the art that went with it and the interior design that goes with it. All that mid-century modern everything. I mean, it's really a cool place. And I'll be honest with you, I was surprised how much I did really like Tel Aviv and just how chillax it was to hit the beach, go get a beer, you know, have some food along the way, chat with some locals. I mean, it's a really fun place. And so that was really fun, okay? And... <laughs> And honestly, when you're going around, I just want to add this one, because this is one thing I talk about in our Don'ts of Israel video as well, but I just really want to really enforce that. Don't worry about getting over hummused when you are here in Tel Aviv, because they do have all those other options. Now, I realize most people, when they're coming to Israel, they're flying in. And one thing I want to say is you're going to be flying in the Tel Aviv airport, most likely. You might go into Iliad, depending where you're flying from, but most likely you're going to be coming into Tel Aviv. And I want to tell you this. Don't think leaving Israel is as fast as entering Israel, because when you fly in, Honestly, when you fly into Tel Aviv, it's a super efficient airport. Went very quickly for me. You're going to get off your plane. You're going to go to these little kiosks. You're putting your passport in there. They take a picture and they print out this little blue card for you. Okay, well, it's blue on top, white on the bottom. Keep that card because that's like your stamp, visa, entry, whatever you want to call it. That's your thing you need to have because you can show places so you don't have to pay the VAT taxes and things. So it can be helpful. Your uh, hotel probably is going to need it to help you check in, but you can do that there. But it's really, really quick. Like you get off the plane. And we got off and I'm walking down. I see the lines, the people again, do, we do our passport things, take our picture, they print it out, walk down. So the passport line was really quick. We got our luggage and we're out. I'm like, wait, I thought, I thought it took forever. Where's with all the security and stuff? Well, the thing is that quickness you get getting into the airport and out of the airport, you know, when you're arriving, it takes longer when you're leaving. Like when you leave, that's when they really check you. So if you're going to be going and you're going to be flying out, don't do that last minute. Like, oh, I'll get there 45 minutes, an hour before my flight. No, you need to give yourself plenty of time to get back. Sometimes it is quick. Sometimes it isn't, okay? So don't think it's going to be the same. Don't let that entry quickness reflect and influence your quickness of getting to the airport the day you fly. Honestly, don't mess around when it comes to timing, when it comes to flying out of Tel Aviv, because no one tells you, don't forget there's a pre-security check. So before you get to check your bags and check in, you have to go through a security check as well, where they say hi and talk to you and answer, you know, ask you some questions. So that's why, I mean... Three hours is no joke. I'm even more comfortable maybe four. I mean, so just something to think about when you're coming here. Now, the thing that people worry about when they come to Israel is about safety. And I'll be honest with you, when you're here in Tel Aviv, you feel pretty safe. Like we were walking late night with the kids, no problem. You're at the beach early in the morning, not worried about it. That's what's really cool. It's like you actually do feel really safe when you're here in Tel Aviv. And that's a nice thing. So it actually helps you to relax, to enjoy those beaches, to enjoy, yes, all the hummus and all the other great food you have in your year. Honestly, anything with eggplant, you can't lose, okay? But even if you do see soldiers with the rifles and things, it's not a big deal. I know some people get freaked out about it, but it's just a normal thing. Remember, everyone they turn 18, okay, they have to go to the military when they're here in Israel. So everybody's a part of that. So you actually will see that. And, and don't be afraid to actually ask them questions or like, hey, if you need directions, that's one of those things. If you do get stopped, I mean, don't joke around with, with the officers, you know, with the soldiers, if they're like an official capacity, but if they're walking around, you can ask them questions. It's no big deal because everybody's doing a part of that, okay? Because everyone has to participate. Now, if I'm going to talk about safety when we are here, I mean, I know I already mentioned the sun for a safety thing, but another safety I have for you is don't drive or at least don't tempt the drivers when you're here in Tel Aviv. When you're in Israel, the drivers are a bit forward, let's say, a bit aggressive. And so 
you can rent a car and you can drive around Israel, it's fine. But just know that the traffic and like the aggressive nature of getting into different spots and swerving in and, and merging and stuff, it can be a bit stressful. So that's why I say it's maybe hire a guy to drive you around or a driver to take you places just to kind of take that stress away from you. Because unless you're used to driving that, it can be a bit stressful. And even if you're not driving, if you're just walking around, honestly, don't mess around with those drivers because crossing the street, you are always waiting for that light. Even if you're like, oh, there's plenty of time. Don't, just just wait, it's fine. You'll notice the other people, they're waiting too, even though there's no cars coming, because honestly, you never know where a car's gonna come out from, okay? And, and it is a pedestrian. I think another note I have for you is, don't think the sidewalk's just for you. Because you'll notice when you're walking around Tel Aviv, and you know, because there's all the traffic in the streets and stuff, but you'll notice that bikes will ride by you on the sidewalk, or the worst of the people in those little motorized scooters, not like the Vespas, but like the little like lime scooter kind of things, where it's just like, you give your kid when they're little and it just has a motor on the back and they're just zooming around everywhere. So, so don't think that pedestrian street, i.e. sidewalk, is just for you because there's gonna be other people riding around there. So do pay attention, especially if you got little kids, like keep them a little bit closer by so like they don't wander in front of an oncoming or most likely from behind, you know, scooter or bike. Cause I don't hear too many ding, ding, dings, watch out when they're here, all right? So be aware of that. And you can rent those little scooters. And actually that's a nice thing to do. If you're here on the beach, you can rent the scooters, you can go down. And honestly, if you go to the south, go to the south of Tel Aviv, don't forget to go to Jaffa when you go there. Because down there you have St. Peter's Church just down there. You got the clock tower that's there. And it's definitely, Jaffa's gonna give you a much more different vibe. Like when you're in Tel Aviv proper, I mean, it's the steel and glass and in modern city kind of vibe. You go to Jaffa, that's where you get more of the old world kind of vibe. And it's a definitely different vibe. That's one of the big things I say. Jaffa's definitely has a different vibe than Tel Aviv. That's why it makes it so fun to go there. Whether you're gonna go eat or shop when you're down there, but don't forget to go down there. It's just like, really from where I am right now, it's like three kilometers down that way. Like it's an easy walk, even for a fat guy like me. Now another thing that surprises tourists when they come to Tel Aviv is don't forget to bring some layers because if you're coming in the winter time, I mean, it does get chilly here, okay? It's not like it's hot and sunny all the time when you're here, it gets cool. And, and in the evening time, even in the summer, you're going to have layers to cover up because it does get chilly, okay? Like, honestly, last night we were walking around, Liam was like, Dad, can I use your quarter zip? I'm like, sure, buddy, because honestly, it was a little cool. And we're here in July, June, and so you want to be aware of that because not a lot of people think about, oh, long sleeve shirts and quarter zips and jackets when you're coming to Tel Aviv in the summer or the winter. So make sure you're preparing correctly. So remember, always do the 10-day forecast before you travel. Now, another thing I think is important to know about Tel Aviv when you're here is this city, it is a lot of people in a very small space. So don't expect to get a lot of alone time when you are here. What's cool is there's like parks around the city or boulevards you can walk on that kind of give you a little respite from having people all around you. But in general, don't expect a lot of alone time when you are here. And with all the people that are here, the great restaurants that are here, don't forget to make reservations for dinner at night. And here, you might eat dinner at 10 o'clock at night. I mean, restaurants might not have like the really good going until eight or nine o'clock at night, but honestly, don't skip out on reservations when you're here in Tel Aviv, especially the place you really want to eat at, because honestly, you don't want to be stuck not eating one of the great restaurants. But what's nice is there's so many good places to eat here that if you don't get something, you'll be able to find something. But I want you to eat where you really want to eat so you can get what you really want when you're here. So don't forget those reservations. And if you go to a place and they are already reserved out for the night, you might want to ask them, well, could we eat there and then you know, be done before? you know, that reservation, because I know last night we were walking around and we didn't think we were gonna go out to dinner because we were all tired. We're like, we just grab a little something and go. They were like, you know what? Maybe we grab something before we go back to the hotel. And so we actually went to this restaurant. And we're like, hey, do you have any tables? Like we're actually booked up for the night, but if you can promise me you'll be out of here by 9 p.m., you can sit. Like, all right. So we sat down, we ate, we're about out by 8.45. They were happy, we were happy. And so that was kind of a way to get around, not have the reservation is eating a bit earlier or promising that you'll get out before the next reservation comes. And they'll let you know, y'all need to speed that up, okay? And the thing is, is that speed you up before the next reservation comes is probably one of the few times you're gonna get really fast service when you are here. And I wanna tell you that, when you're here in Tel Aviv, don't expect like super fast service or super friendly service. It'll be professional, but just know that sometimes you might need to be a little proactive with the, with getting the waiter or ordering your drinks, or if you wanna get another drink, if you wanna order some food or appetizers, do be aware of that. And when you'll notice is when you do order, they will be very suggestive and things you should get. And that's what's nice is if you're not sure, because maybe you don't know what Israeli food is. You're like, I don't know what I should get. Here are the restaurants, they are very helpful in explaining what the food is. That's very nice. You don't have to worry about not speaking Hebrew when you are here because since it's a tourist city and English is spoken by most of the people and the kids learn it in schools, 
young people, waiters, they're going to be speaking English. You're not going to have any problems with that. I was, you know, like Shalom, which is hi, and Toda, Toda Raba, you know, which is like, thank you, thank you very much. That's going to go a long way to make people smile. But honestly, you're not going to have any problems when you're here because the signs and the menus, yes, they'll be in Hebrew, but they'll also be in English. So you will have that. And, and you'll notice when you go out to eat here, or maybe you're looking for accommodation, don't expect Tel Aviv to be cheap. I mean, Israel in general is not a cheap place to go. Tel Aviv, I mean, it's already an expensive country and it's you're at a beach, you know, tourist destination. So it's like, let's throw in all the high price reasons why a place is going to be expensive. It all has it here. Now, a lot of people, when they come to Israel, they kind of stop by Tel Aviv and they use it as a beach side. And then they'll go to Jerusalem and use that as a base to go out to other parts of the country. One thing is, don't think you have to stay in Jerusalem. You actually can stay in Tel Aviv and then go out and explore because you have plenty of day trips from here. You know, you can get to, you know, you can go to Jerusalem, you can do that. You can go to the caves, you can head up the Dead Sea because there's tours from here. Because you have to realize, Israel is a very small country. It's not that far from top to bottom and, and east to west. So you can actually get a lot of places from here. So you can sign up for your tours when you're here. And if you're going to do your tours, one thing I'm going to tell you is, one, don't be late. Okay, because they're going to pick you up. They say be there at 8.20. They mean we're leaving at 8.20. So be in the lobby, be where they tell you to be so you can have that. Also, don't forget to bring coverings, you know. So you want to make sure you have pants because you're going to go to religious sites around Israel. You're going to have to have pants to cover your legs. Women, you got to make sure you can cover your shoulders. Like Jocelyn always has a shawl with her, you know, to cover up. So you have that. So that way you don't, like, not get allowed to go into certain sites when you're going around the country. But honestly... Don't worry, you can use Tel Aviv as a, as a okay, base for your day trips to go and explore more of Israel. And the thing is, we have a lot of don'ts and mistakes for travelers coming here to Israel in general. And we have other videos for that. So I'll link those below in terms of like the don'ts, which is more kind of serious don'ts for traveling to Israel. But also just the little mistakes that tourists make when they come here and help kind of hurts them and helps them, keeps them, I guess you'd say, from enjoying Israel as much as they can. So check out those videos to learn more and we shall the best. And if you have other don'ts, about visiting Tel Aviv, please put in the comment section below so travelers can have a better time when they're here in Tel Aviv. And I'll say bye or shalom from here in Tel Aviv, Israel.